One of the most mysterious aspects of acupuncture and Chinese medical theory is this idea of there being channels in the body. Now, many people on the very crunchy side will, or maybe esoteric is a better word, will say that the channels are a mysterious energy. And people on the very material side, or maybe your chiropractor, will say they're just fascia or they're just muscles. But in reality, the channels are somewhere in between. Now, in this video, I thought I would share a little demonstration of not only what the channels might be, but also a simple exercise for diagnosing what might be going on in some of the channels. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hein, author of the health book Master of the Day and doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So before we jump into this video, I've put together two very important links right below the video. The first is for a free guide, which is four daily rituals that could potentially help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And the second is if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, you can contact my private practice and clinic right below this video. So what are the channels fundamentally? I'm gonna give you a short answer and a long answer. The short answer is, I don't know. And the long answer is that it's a complex interaction, probably of muscles and nerves and the circulatory system, electricity, and maybe even other factors that we aren't aware of, maybe some kind of interstitial fluid. I honestly don't know. But what I do know is that there is not only a piece of the channels, what we think of as the acupuncture channels, that is muscular, because when you look at dissections done of people from a fascial plane, I think uh, an anatomist named Gil Headley is someone who's done this more than anyone that I know, they look very, very, very similar to the channels. You know, if you look at the bladder channel, that goes along the posterior of the body from the paraspinal muscles all the way down to the calves and down to the Achilles, that looks almost like one sheet that is the exact bladder channel in Chinese medicine. But that doesn't mean the channels of Chinese medicine are just muscular. In fact, one of our most ancient texts clearly says it is not muscular. The muscles, the bones, the tendons, the flesh. So the channels are not just muscles, bones, tendons, connective tissue, categorically. That's what our ancient medical classics say, the people who created Chinese medicine, who utilized acupuncture, who invented acupuncture theory, said that. But it also doesn't mean that it is a mystical kind of energy. And I only wanna share here what I know to be true right now with my current state of knowledge and experience. But in general, the ancient classics described the channels and the points almost as like these waterways. So many of the points, for example, the some of the phase points or the transport points, as they're often translated, have, you know, the descriptions of these channels are viewed as like waterways where, you know, there's a point in the crook of the elbow that, you know, a lot of these point names have like crook or cave or uh, marsh in the name. And so there's some aspect anatomically that is clear. Some points, the meaning of the points is clearly anatomical. Some is a functional name and some is something else, right? Some points, the back shoe points on the back, the bladder channel runs along the spine. Some of those points deal with the spirit, right? Certain qualities related to certain aspects of the spirit in the body. These ancient classics describe points and these channels almost as waterways. And so by regulating the function of the channel, the flow in the channel, you can regulate the function of the organs within the body. And that's very important to keep in mind. So I wanna jump in and give a little demo of going over the spleen channel and the lung channel. Just a general exercise in channel palpation, learning to spot little subtle changes in the channel, as well as very common clinical findings that do not require uh, a master of acupuncture to spot out. So let's walk through, I'm gonna show you the spleen and the lung channel, we'll go through them and I'll point out some things to observe. Let's start with the spleen channel and the spleen channel runs big toe inside of the foot. I'm gonna push on my leg here so you can see the line. Actually, it's very interesting. It follows, you can see the veins on me because I'm lean, but you can see the vein coming here, right? Key points here that I want you to observe. Just start by just gently running your hand along the channel, all right? I'm gonna come here, through here, and then right along the bone. All right, so commonly needled points for acupuncturists are typically, you know, spleen three, spleen four, spleen six, sometimes the she cleft point, spleen nine. But 
the first thing with just observing the channel, right? This is a video on just observing what's going on in the channels, at least the physical aspects. Just run your finger along it and see what you notice. First thing you would notice typically on spleen, spleen three and four is notice the texture. Does it feel soft and mushy? Does it feel really tight with tension? Very common to find not only very soft, mushy, which is very a deficient spleen, common in what we call spleen chi deficiency, loose stools, bloating, food sensitivities, that kind of thing, a lot of gas. But a lot of the time on the spleen channel here, you'll find it really mushy, really, really soft. It just kind of caves in. Now compare that to some people whose spleen channel here is really, really tight, really tight band of tension. So that would be first one is the quality of the tissue. The next is the temperature. Is it, does it feel cold? Cold and clammy, right? Cold and clammy feet is totally different channel finding in Chinese medicine than warm feet, dry, good muscle tone, muscle tension there, right? So just feel the channel texture and then temperature and then even moisture. Those are three important channel findings you'll observe. And then as we come up further along the channel, spleen six is a commonly needled point as we get up in here, but come up the medial aspect of the leg here, right? What most people think of as the inside of their calf. And you'll notice, take your thumb and apply moderate pressure, slowly increasing pressure. And you'll notice that right in this area, the top one third of the calf in the spleen channel around spleen nine point up in here, this category, you'll notice some people get these nodules and I'm one of those people where if you put light pressure, medium pressure and heavy pressure right in this area, you start to feel what feel like little pea sized gummies. So there are these little chunky gummies that are going on right in the spleen channel there. Those little nodules are very, very diagnostic uh, from a channel perspective. So first thing is, just trace the channel. You can go down it, you can go up it. Notice the temperature. Obviously notice the, the texture, right? I notice up here is normal temperature, but my feet are cold and the inside, spleen three and four area are clammy. So that's a clear finding. The texture is somewhere in between in terms of the muscle tone. And then we get up here and then we feel some of these nodules in the spleen getting up towards spleen nine up here at the top of the calf, the medial side. So noticing texture, luster, temperature, moisture, and then little findings like these little lumps are key things to pay attention to on some of these channels here. Now, another channel that we're going to cover here is the, the, some aspects of the lung channel, just the inferior portion. So the lung channel begins up in the chest, right? Comes down along the bicep and on the thumb here. But the findings that are most obvious, that are simple ones to find for some people, are if you trace first, let's go back to the tracing exercise. So we're just tracing, right? Obviously, if this is a patient, I'm kind of going this way because it's easier. But you could either trace this way or just like this way. And the first thing is just notice what you feel on the channel, just from a really objective kind of scientific perspective. Does it, is it, is there a lot of muscle tension? Is it very soft and mushy? Is there a temperature differential you notice? Medial versus lateral. Does it, the luster or the tone, does that vary at all? And then let's pay attention to some channel findings. Let's see if we see anything here. One of the things I notice the most is if we're just light pressure, you can sort of feel a little kink here where the, you can see the, even in the muscle, right? You can see where the forearm, I'm flexing, sensing like that, extending like that, but one of the most common findings in the lung channel via palpation is as we get up here, you'll notice that some people also get that same finding, these nodules. Some people have a, a granular or a sandy kind of feeling. Some people have a lumpy nodular feeling as we get up here. 
closer to the elbow. This is very common to start feeling a bit of a nodular type feel right in here. So pay attention to that. Sometimes these patients have a long-term asthma or issues with allergies, and you'll feel that right in some of these lung points, right up uh, towards the elbow here. Now, the other thing is pay attention to indents or something that protrudes, right? So you may notice that certain parts of the channel, they're, they dip in or they stick out a little more, right? So when we go down these other channels, you'll notice, pay attention to the differences in, in texture and luster and even the, the tone here. But in general, just lightly go down the channel first, then more pressure and more pressure, and you'll start to notice just texture changes throughout the channel. And those can sometimes be indicative of uh, certain pathologies or they can be a diagnostic piece of the puzzle. But we've talked about the spleen, we've talked about the lung, that's one of the ways you can sort of scan the channels, at least certainly the material portion, the muscular portion of these channels. All right guys, so I hope that helps. Again, the channel's very interesting and in some ways still a very mysterious uh, feature of Chinese medicine, no doubt about it. One part of it is definitely material, you know, fascial pathways, muscles, uh, connective tissue, and one part of it is not. And I don't know what that other part is yet, but maybe in uh, 50 years, I'll let you know when I find out. Don't forget, two important links right below the video if you'd like to become a patient locally in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, and the free guide, which is four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with Chinese medicine. So check those out down there below.